telling this jury you saw no evidence of blood, tissue, or anything that would indicate somebody had showered or washed off or bathed um, to remove evidence of a crime from them. Is that what you're telling us? Yes, sir. There was nothing visible to me. Well, that is SLED investigator Katie McAllister testifying that she found no noticeable amounts of blood in the home of former attorney Alec Murdoch following the shooting deaths of his wife and son. We have more of that testimony coming up in a moment. But first, we want to look at arguments surrounding how relevant Alec Murdoch's alleged financial crimes are to the trial. The arguments were made to Judge Clifton Newman today without the jury present. The prosecution introduced a witness from Murdoch's former law group who said Alec Murdoch was confronted about nearly $800,000 in missing money on the very same day his wife and son were killed. He assured me that the money was there and that he could get it. And at that point, I said, I know, I said, I'm just trying to do my job. And if I don't get this paperwork and verify that with these questions, I'm not doing my job. He actually acted like he respected that and again said that that money was there and that he again was trying to decide what he was going to be doing with it. Well, prosecutors say this evidence is important to the case because it points to motive. While the defense is arguing the alleged financial crimes are not related to the shooting deaths. A final decision by the judge on allowing this evidence is expected sometime tomorrow. And because of those arguments today, the jury only heard from a few witnesses. We have more details from Walterboro. I'm Kaylin Hagwood outside the Collin County Courthouse. Much of the day involved hearings on whether Murdoch's alleged financial crimes would be admissible in the days ahead. As those discussions continue away from the jury, here's a look at what jurors were able to hear today. Phone and video records took center stage today as prosecutors continued to lay out their case against former Lowcountry attorney Alec Murdoch. After spending much of the day in hearings away from the jury, just a few people actually testified before jurors. First was a Snapchat representative who spoke about cell phone video on Paul's phone before his death. That same video was presented to jurors yesterday, and the prosecution says it shows Alec with his son shortly before the killings took place. It's a video of um, a subject near a tree. And it's um, a short video with some audio. First seen June 7th, 2021. Investigator Dylan Hightower also took the stand. He and others collected phones, including Maggie's and Alex, which he says could have had some calls deleted. Sled agent Katie McAllister searched the property after the killings, but did not find any bloody clothing, something defense attorney Dick Harputlian made note of. See any evidence of any clothes that had been uh, involved in any sort of altercation that had left blood or tissue or brains. No, sir, I didn't find anything like that. The defense says the lack of blood evidence helps prove his innocence, but prosecutors suggest it could mean he cleaned himself after committing the crimes. Jurors will return to hear more witness testimony tomorrow at 1130. Reporting in Calton County, I'm Kaylin Hagwood. Kaylin, thank you. In her report, you heard her mention Snapchat video from Paul Murdoch's phone. In it, you see Alec Murdoch wearing these clothes. According to the prosecution and police, he was wearing a different set of clothing later that day after his wife and son were killed. So again, the Snapchat video from the day of the slayings, he was wearing something different than he was wearing later in the evening. We spoke with a local criminal defense lawyer, Taylor Bell, about the lack of blood evidence in Alec Murdoch's home. Take a listen. So if we've got this time frame uh, in which this occurred that uh, the prosecution's laying out uh, as they're documenting, going down these by minute by minute, second by second, mm -hmm. these these phones, these three phones that they're they're all comparing. Um, you know, it doesn't leave much time though to get rid of the clothes. So the question is, where are they? Um, I understand that we have a video showing two different clothes, but but where are those clothes if we've got this brutal murder that was committed? Uh, and that's I think the defense is going to, you know, get into that definitely during closing. Another focus of testimony today was how the data from the Murdoch's phones was collected the night of the slayings. According to witnesses, phones typically use a database to store information like phone orientation. That means if the phone is horizontal or vertical, battery percentage and GPS location. However, a sled agent says there is a way to limit some tracking features. Majority of the time when you add a new app to your phone, it asks you do you want to allow location services. Do you want to allow it all the time, only while using the app, or never? You can also go into your own settings and change those location services. 
Well, witnesses say footsteps and distance walked on a phone isn't always 100% accurate when tracked, with the possibility that a phone might move a short distance and not record steps. And if you're interested in keeping up with the Murdoch trial, the proceedings will resume tomorrow morning at 930. You can watch it live on our website, WLTX.com, our WLTX YouTube page, our free News 19 mobile app, or our WLTX Plus app.